hey friends welcome back to the channel in today's episode of how to build an editor with emacs list we're going to talk about more solutions to create loops in our programs and the very first one is recursion the good old recursion it's quite simple basically a recursive function is just a function that is defined defines in terms of itself to put it simply a function that calls itself in the body uh, it's pretty simple you don't have to memorize any new syntax it's easy to implement but at the same time it's really easy to mess it up um, you have to be very careful with recursion because we can easily fall into an infinite loop um, that's why actually some modern programming languages replaces recursion with something like logical induction um, but we're not going to talk about that uh, in our video series it's way out of our scope let's see how recursion works in emacs list let's define a function called foo with just one input variable called int um in this like in the body we actually print int first and then we check whether or not int is greater than zero if it is then we reduce it by one whatever value that int holds we reduce it by one and we call foo, uh, call foo again passing that new value to foo so basically it's like call foo like in this example I, I call foo with number 10 as input right so it's like call foo with 10 then reduce it by one call foo again with nine same process goes uh over and over again till we reach zero so when int holds zero our condition here would not be true and then we break out of the loop and return from the function it's quite like it's super simple as i mentioned but again, uh, a bit tricky if we mess it up and, you know, uh, come up with a condition that holds true all the time, we fall into an infinite loop. Uh, let's see it in, in action, actually. Let's define foo and execute it, evaluate it. As you can see, prints uh, 10 to 0 and uh, it returns nil because when we actually break out of this loop, um, there's no other uh, expression here and when would be evaluated to nil so that would be the return value of our function again um, super simple easy to use and a bit tricky and you, uh, you have to be really careful when uh, you use recursion but Let's talk about some uh, functional style loops in Emacs list. Basically, um, like we have uh, a lot of different functions that we can talk about them today in even in some external modules that I'm not going to talk about them today, but we uh, might talk about them in future episodes, like the dash library and things like that. So for today, uh, I just, just chose some of the functions that personally I like or I think uh, we're going to come across them uh, quite frequently in our work uh, but there's plenty more it's up to you to look them up but they kind of work the same way so let's start by the mapping functions family basically map functions I chose three here but there's more um, all three have something in common they apply a function to a sequence, uh, like a, to a sequence. What is a sequence? Uh, so basically a sequence is a higher, like a higher level abstraction over something like list, right? So lists are sequence, strings are sequence, vectors are sequence. Uh, actually we didn't talk about vectors uh, up until now, and we're not going to talk about them in this episode as well, but maybe in the future. Um, so you, a sequence basically is sequence of elements that's it other data type like different data types uh, can be counted as a sequence um so all all the mapping family mapping functions family have something in common as i mentioned all of them apply a function to a sequence to all the elements of a sequence uh but they like they are different in a way they deal with the uh, you know the returning value of that function so um, map car is the most common map function that you might come across uh, in elist code 
basically it applies it gets two parameters by default um a function and a sequence it applies the given function to every element in that sequence so here i pass function one plus which is like add one to uh to the input and i use this sequence this list uh one two three four five uh as our sequence so when i run this as you can see on the bottom uh left it adds one to every element in that uh original list and return a new list um here is another example we can pass lambda uh an uh, anonymous function to the uh, to map car as well just to you know to bring to power of two uh, every input element quite simple map car basically collects the return value of uh, the function that we're going to apply to each element and returns the re returning values as a new list like the kind of classic map function but we see two new uh, two new things here um this notation here right and lambda let's talk about uh, this new coding um notation basically it's a read syntax so it's kind of a shortcut that the uh, elis reader understands and knows how to replace it with the actual thing I i'm going to tell you what uh, what is the actual thing here but simply it's like using uh, a single uh, code here to code some expression it works the same way both are read syntax that can be replaced with the actual expression so in terms of uh, single code it re the reader replaced the single code with a code right so it would be the same as uh sorry this one right um but in terms of actually let's do this so so these two are equal and in terms of um, this new read syntax it's the same as code but the difference is it replaces uh, like the reader replaces it with a function the difference is like both of them are a way to actually code an expression right but in the first example like code simply just codes the expression it's like don't evaluate this ex expression i mean the expression itself but in terms of function what function does is to kind of uh, give a hint to email to the lisp interpreter saying that whatever uh, expression that i'm coding at the moment is supposed to be a function right so expect that whatever i'm quoting at the moment to be a function and to be like to act like a function right so basically if we actually just code the function here like normally code the function here it still will work right but providing more hints to the emacs lisp interpreter or compiler would be uh, beneficial for us so it can actually uh, check whether or not this function is being called somewhere right now is obvious but um, basically we're letting the emacs lisp interpreter to do it magic like giving hint to it to do a better job um, so basically whenever you want to code a function it's better you to use this read syntax um, and lambdas are just uh, anonymous functions in uh, emacs lisp um there's a different uh, like when we define lambdas in different uh, modes in emacs lisp like uh, whether we're in the dynamic binding uh, mode or in lexical scope mode it acts differently but since we're going to use lexical scope all the time um, we don't care about the dynamic binding so in a lexical scope lambda literally define a um, anonymous function which maps to a closure um, we can use lambdas wherever we expect to uh, use a function so uh, works quite nice um, with emacs lisp 
that's it for the new syntax that we see today. Um, let's move to map C. Map C works exactly like map car, applies the function to every element in the uh, sequence. But the difference is it doesn't collect the return value of the function. So it discards the return value and basically map C use, like, is supposed to be used for any function that holds the side effect. So print, for example, has a side effect that is like it does something to the word, right? So it's better to use map C for, uh, you know, to um, print out every element there to apply a side effect to every, uh, apply a function with side effect to every element in our list. And it doesn't collect the return values, so it doesn't return anything. Probably it's return new, right? Actually, it returns the uh, list, the original list itself. Um, another function which is quite useful is map concat. Again, works like map car, but the difference is it collects the return value, uh, return values of the function, but instead of returning um, them in a list, it actually apply the function concat to that new list. Concat works as you expected concatenate the elements of a list and creates a string right so in this example here uh, i used function format to just you know um, as the function we get the element as uh, input x here i format it as an a string uh, kind of surrounded it with uh, uh, brackets and return it right so by doing this Sorry. As you can see, it returns a string, not a list, right? And uh, a string contains of all the return values of this function concatenated into an a string. Uh, it accepts another uh, element as well, uh, which is like the separator we can use. By default, it's empty. So if we actually pass something like, oops. What have I done? Um, where are we? Here. If I pass something like this in here, right, and evaluate the code, as you can see, we get a new separator, or we can even do more, whatever, to demonstrate the difference. So, map concat is quite uh, useful. I use it a lot. And uh, as I mentioned, we have more mapping functions, but uh, they work all the same. They all differ in the way we, uh, like the function uh, treats the return value of the Lambda. There's another, um, there's a module in uh, Emacs list, which is really handy called uh, Sig module. I use it quite a lot. Uh, it's built in. Um, again, there, there's other even nicer alternatives but we're going to talk about them in the future. I chose uh, the SIG module because it's built in and uh, literally you can use it. You don't have to install a package. Um, one of the, like literally my favorite function of all time in any programming language is reduce. If you don't know how reduce works, uh, basically it works like map itself, but it holds an estate throughout the iteration. So it takes three element, uh, three inputs. Sorry, the first one is the function that we want to apply to each element in our collection or sequence. The second one is the sequence itself, and the last parameter is just the initial value. How it works is. It's going to apply this function to every element in the sequence and basically our function gets two inputs the first one is the accumulator which is the our states throughout the iteration and the second one is the current element that we're processing to begin with on the very first iteration the accumulator is going to be set to the initial value so here i have a function that kind of sum up all the elements in our list the very first uh, on very first iteration, the input ACK would be zero because we pass zero as the initial value. And then the very first element is going to be one. So it's going to 
um, kind of add one to the accumulator, whatever value it has, and return the value. That return value then is going to be the on the next iteration, the new accumulator, right? So whenever we finish the whole iteration, like iterating all the elements, the return value of uh, lambda, which, which is going to be the newest value, the recent value for accumulator, would be the return value of the reduce itself. So in this case, as you can see, it returns 10, which is like the sum of uh, all the elements in this list. It, it Again, it, it's my personal opinion. Reduce is the coolest function ever in any programming language. That's it. I like it so much, right? Um, you can basically you can define every other um, function that we discussed today in terms of a, a reduce function. That's how powerful reduce is actually. Um, another handy function is uh, filter stick dash filter. Uh, basically, you can filter every element uh, in a sequence or in a list uh, based on a prediction. So a uh, predicate, sorry. This lambda here is a predicate that returns true or false. It gets the input, like the input would be the element, uh, every element in that list. And in this example, we check whether or not X, which is the input is less than 10. If it is like choose that value, choose that element to be returned, otherwise discard it. So here, if I run this filter function, as you can see, it returns eight and nine, the only elements that are less than 10. Quite useful uh, function. Another one is uh, seek partition. We're going to use it uh, kind of frequently uh, when we're going to talk about macros. Um, what it does is you, you pass it a, like a, a list or sequence, and you ask it to partition that sequence uh, based on a number. So right here, I pass two. It's like I want to partition this list into pairs. So if we run this, as you can see, uh, we get a new list back with three elements. Each element is a pair. Uh, so the first one would be AB, the second one would be CD, and the last pair would be EF. But if we uh, replace two with three, we're going to get only two elements. So it partitioned that list into uh, um, like partition the elements into triplets instead of pairs. Um, it's quite useful, especially when you work with macros and you want to kind of um, have a macro that gets like key pair values uh, from the input. You can get a list and then partition it into pairs uh, to create that key value style uh, input. Um, and finally, uh, sig min and sig max uh, are kind of useful as well. They don't need any um, explanations. They're quite um, obvious. Um, that's it for today. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, these were just a few functions that I found uh, useful. But if you're interested, uh, check out the manual for the seek module or check out dash. We're going to talk about dash in the future or other uh, other uh, libraries out there that give you uh, like nicer interfaces for uh, functional style uh, loops and iterations. Um, about the map family, again, there's more, but uh, there are more, but um, oh, they work the same. So if you know about one or two, you can kind of uh, pick up the rest quite easy and um, do what you want with them. In the next episode, we're going to start talking about uh, macros. It's going to take us a few episodes, but I think after macros, we're, we'll be in a good kind of position to start working on the project and learn the rest while we're working on the project. So we're going to be done with the basics soon and hope to see you in the next episode.